On November 22, 1986, the champion of the World Boxing Council's Heavyweight Championship, Trevor Burbick, was slayed to fight in a bout known as Judgment Day. The man who gave Muhammad Ali his final match, Burbick had won the title in a tight-fought but ultimately unanimous decision victory earlier that year. However, he found himself at a 3-1 to one betting odds disadvantage over his challenger, who was coming into his very first title bout. This challenger had a record of 27 wins, 0 losses over his professional career. 25 of those wins were by knockout, and 16 of them came in the first round. Unfortunately for Burbick, this fight would end up as just another series of statistics on the challenger's rap sheet. The fight would last only to 2 minutes and 35 seconds into round 2. The challenger landed 46 damaging power punches compared to the defending champion's 43 total punches thrown. At just 20 years and 4 months of age, the youngest heavyweight boxing champion in the history of the sport, to this day, was crowned. And his name was Mike Tyson. I cannot express to you just how big of a deal Mike Tyson was during his prime. In the closest analogue to gladiatorial combat that the modern world would allow, Tyson wasn't just a beast, he was an unstoppable force, the likes of which the sport hadn't seen. And the media was absolutely rabid over his success. Tyson becoming a household name to the caliber of Michael Jordan, children all over America and potentially even the world knowing that he was the most fearsome force in the squared circle. Tyson would go on to claim the WVA and IBF championships through 1987, becoming the first man to hold every single major heavyweight US boxing championship at the same time. By the time Mike Tyson's Punch-Out was released in October of that year, he had an undefeated 31-fight victory streak, all of the belts, and a media frenzy the likes of which the world had never seen. He was truly and absolutely the baddest man on the planet. Now beat him. The closer I get to the ring, I'm more confident. Once I'm in the ring, I'm a god. No one could beat me. I walk around the ring, but I never, I never take my eyes off my opponent. I keep my eyes on him. Then once I see a chink in his arm, boom. Then when he comes to the center of the ring, he still looks at me with his piercing look and as if he's not afraid. But he already made that mistake when he, when he looked down for that one tenth of a second. I know I had. I know I already broke his spirit. Nintendo's Minoru Arakawa caught one of Tyson's fights during the Consumer Electronics Show of 1986, and struck a three-year licensing contract with the young fighter. Tyson wasn't yet champion at this point, but Arakawa saw an utterly electrifying force that would elevate Punch-Out to the next level, and his instincts paid dividends as Tyson earned greater and greater acclaim. But Nintendo was not satisfied to merely ride Mike's success. They did everything in their power to build him up as the greatest challenge their console could offer. Tyson dominates the box art, the star of not only the photo, but the first bullet point, with his actual signature on the title to give it a personal touch. Every time a player boots up the game, they're greeted with Tyson grinning, looking down at them, the game telling them, that Mike is waiting for your challenge. The entire game is a build-up to this one fight, earning the right to issue Tyson a challenge just as he gave you the means to do so. After becoming the World Circuit Champion and earning the same number of belts as Tyson had, you can enter a code to take you straight to Macho Man by looking at this password right next to this article about Mario being an illegitimate father or tap into some real Nintendo power and head straight to the Tyson fight. It's just you and Kid Dynamite in the fight you've always been dreaming of.
previous fights were about crafting an insurmountable foe that, with enough dedication, anyone could defeat. But beating Mike Tyson requires a special kind of person. Someone that's not only skilled, not only dedicated, but one that can take a whoopin'. Tyson is a maestro of power hits, crouching before a hook or uppercut to add an extra spring to his punch, with his signature KO touch being a right hook to the body, followed by a right uppercut to the chin. His defense was no less excellent, using the incredibly tight peekaboo style to protect his face and making a career out of punching through complaints that the stance was offensively weak. What's amazing about Punch-Out is how well this plucky little NES game was able to adapt Tyson's fighting style into a boss fight. Tyson throws nothing but dynamite punches for the first 90 seconds of the fight, instantly knocking Mac down if even one of them lands. Previous fights had some kind of super move, some kind of overpowered technique with a special tell to get the player afeard of a rallying opponent. But Tyson's super move is being Mike Tyson, relying only on fundamentals polished to an absolutely deadly degree. You see this? Trying to weather the storm, make a comeback, get filled up with Doc's secret back rub technique? Completely worthless. Kid Dynamite sending you back to the mat in one punch. Mike Tyson's fight is uniquely humbling, because it doesn't even seem fair, giving you no chance to even react or grasp at an opening. No man has ever weaponized fear in sports quite as effectively as Mike Tyson, and his pixelated counterpart upholds his legacy perfectly. Tyson himself even thinks you're a joke, wondering where the real challenger is. The code 007-363-5963 is burned into the minds of Tyson's challengers, as even after surviving Tyson's famous first round onslaught, Iron Mike will mix in brutal crosses, lightning fast jabs, and even a faster Honda Rush variant, while keeping his guard tight, never leaving his body open, and recovering from a stun incredibly quickly. The only reward many players will ever see, the final image of their boxing careers, will be their retirement at the gloves of Tyson, just like dozens of boxers before them. But even Iron Mike has a weakness. In one of the biggest upsets of sports history, Mike Tyson would lose his first professional match in 1990 to underdog Buster Douglas. The secret? Douglas was not afraid, and pushed the fight all the way to the 10th round, finally getting a decisive victory by KO. Tyson put such explosive force, precision, and speed in at the start of the fight that most boxers would easily fall to his assault. But if the fight managed to drag on, he would become exhausted. Almost prophetically, just by seeing the writing on the wall based on his closer matches, Nintendo absolutely nailed this style. Tyson's first round is all about survival. But if you manage to escape with your life, well, he doesn't become easy, but he goes from basically impossible to merely, oh god, please send help. His punches are still meaty, but no longer down you instantly. He'll do his now famous wink to let you know his cross is coming, and he'll blink rapidly before the Honda Rush plus Ultra, giving you one of your only chances to earn a star. Just don't waste a gang hit immediately after. Everything has led up to this moment. Glass Joe's embarrassment, Von Kaiser's confidence, Piston Honda's speed, Don Flamenco's baiting, King Hippo's defense, Great Tiger's tricks, Bald Bull's power, Papinski's unpredictability, Sandman's dread, Macho Man's status, and Mike Tyson's challenge. The fight can end in any number of ways, through a flashy star uppercut, through a desperate tap after repeated blows, coming all the way down to decision, but however you manage it, if you don't give in to fear, eventually Tyson will go down. And even more than the victory, 
Even more than beating the game, what's most special is the congratulations you receive directly from the champ himself. Great fighting, Mac. The legacy of Punch-Out! is one that has extended far beyond its release, with the Tyson fight in particular commonly listed as one of the best, and hardest, final bosses in gaming. Perhaps Tyson might not have the physical strength of a dragon, or a giant robot, or an elder god, but what he does have is feeling like a very real challenge, with a real boxing record, real writings, real difficulty, and a real fighting style. When Nintendo's licensing agreement with Tyson expired in 1990, he was replaced with Mr. Dream in future printings of the game. And despite being technically identical, I don't think it even remotely compares to the fight with Tyson. The legacy of fighting Mike Tyson, the era he emerged from, the fear that the baddest man on the planet naturally exuded. That's something that can only be captured when the stars align. There will perhaps never be another force so perfectly executed as Mike Tyson is in this title, and every future attempt will have Tyson to answer to. Every box of Mike Tyson's Punch-Out contained a letter from Tyson himself, which I'll read aloud in just a moment, outlining his struggles to become champion and encouraging the player to be their best in all they do. I'd like to think it gives a message that not only elevates players, but video games as a whole into being and experiencing more than they ever thought possible through sheer force of will. Not everyone can become a real professional boxer, even fewer get a chance to face Tyson in his prime. But Mike Tyson's Punch-Out! stands as a reminder that you can still get a piece of that feeling, no matter who you are and no matter how many years pass. The challenge is always there, waiting, as long as you stand up to the design for intimidation. Good job, son. Good job. Dear player, becoming boxing's heavyweight champion of the world was the greatest challenge of my life, one that required a great amount of discipline and philosophies that enabled me to grasp the confidence and strength needed to attain such a goal. I would like to share these with you so that you may benefit from them in your personal life encounters. Never be intimidated by someone, regardless of appearances. Insecurities make us feel intimidated. We see someone bigger than us, and we immediately feel at a disadvantage. Or we hear someone who speaks in a harsh tone of voice. We should not allow a person's size or attitude to inhibit us in any way. We should stand up for what we believe. Nobody is born the best. Practice and training makes you the best. We are all born with certain abilities, but these abilities need to be fostered. To be the best is a goal that you must work toward. Never become angry. It will inhibit your ability. Anger affects performance. It causes a lack in concentration which inevitably leads to default. Anger is never positive and therefore never results in a positive outcome. In essence, boxing is 10% physical and 90% mental and emotional. Preparation for any sport requires deep mental concentration. You must take the time to mentally prepare yourself for the challenge, whatever it may be. The one who emerges as the winner is always the one with the stronger state of mind. Don't quit. Quitting is for those who are not serious about their goals. If you give up trying, you will never achieve your goal. Life is full of eager people who try to succeed at everything they do. What all these people have in common is that they never quit. Much success, Mike Tyson, World Heavyweight Champion.